Hello computators, welcome to my new playlist called New Stuff. And here I'm going to show you what's happening at Computate.org and some really cool tricks as a web developer or if you're creating your own website, what you can do to get things started, to make things beautiful and, and do some really cool things. So today I want to show you how to embed your own true type fonts into your web page. So let's get started. First of all, you're going to want to find a free uh, true type font. And I've gone to the same website for years. That website's called mouserfonts.com, but it actually doesn't even exist anymore. It's so old. But thanks to the web archive or the Wayback Machine, we can still pillage those fonts, which are awesome. So here it is on the on the Wayback Machine. I'm gonna pull up a font called 1979. So you can download this, and if you open that, it's compressed. But uh, you extract this TTF file, and you can put that in your site. So we're gonna use that. I've already downloaded it, but anyway. Let's start off by creating a new directory called HTML font. We're going to go in there and we're going to create a, a shell script that you can run again and again to recreate your web page for this. Uh, in this directory. So we're going to call this script generate.sh and edit it with vim. Okay. So first of all, we're going to delete all files starting with underscore index star. The underscore is not important, but it's just my prefix I'm using here for my for my file fragments, the fragments that are going to make the real web page in the end. Okay, so rm f underscore index star will delete any file starting with underscore index. Okay, now we're going to write the beginning of the HTML document. We're going to use echo and then a single quote. And there's a subtle difference between the single quote and the double quote in bash that's really important. If you do a double quote, you can embed um, environment variables like dollar path and it will evaluate that Okay, so in the in the single quote, it won't evaluate it, and it'll echo as the the string dollar path. But if this was a double quote with dollar path, then it would actually expand that into your your path environment variable, which is a big long string of of bin directories. Anyway, here we're going to use the single quote and start writing our HTML. But I always like to use XML, which works really well for me because I love XML in its purity. So we got our XML declaration and then our HTML element. And our head element for metadata. So we put a meta tag and properly encode our HTML file, UTF-8, since I'm very passionate about internationalization and proper encoding. And give this a title of learn about fonts in HTML pages. 
under title and add some style. So we can add a font using the at font dash face CSS construct with a curly brace and then we give it a name we give our font face a name font family colon quote I use quotes here just to be certain that it's gonna work because our font here is 1979 which is just a number which doesn't properly evaluate in CSS if it's not quoted so if you've got spaces in your font name or if it's only numbers you're gonna to want to quote it or you might just want to be consistent and always quote it just in case now we add a source now normally with this with a source you give it a URL which is actually a relative or absolute URL but in our case it's gonna be data colon and here we declare the content type and since it's a dot TDF file it's got a content type of font slash true type we add a semicolon char set and declare our encoding here for the font and we want it UTF-8 and a semicolon base 64 so we're gonna base 64 encode this font now what does that mean so we have that font here and let's take a look at it in this directory oops now sir a 1979.ttf okay so this is a binary file So that doesn't make a lot of sense, but we can base 64 encode it, and that turns it into base 64 characters, which is awesome. That means we can put it in our web page, and it's still binary, but it's base 64 encoded instead. Okay, so we need to we need to get all of these lines on one big long line together. And we can use Perl. And Perl is one of the wonders of the world. And one of my favorite tools. And I barely even know it, but just enough to do some powerful regex and other expressions that are really handy. Okay, so if we base64 encode this and then pipe it into Perl dash PE, and here's some quotes chomp this is a Perl command that will get rid of all the new line characters so we chomp it and what we get is everything on one big line perfect okay so let's take that command we wrote and put it in our script but uh, let's finish this line so we're gonna write the HTML up to here and then close that and write it to a file called underscore index01.html. Okay, and then we base64 encode the first font. Like that. And we're gonna write that into another file index zero two dash font dash nineteen seventy nine whatever we want here the important thing is that it's alphabetically 
ordered after the first file. So index underscore index zero one is before underscore index zero two, which will work. We can give it whatever extension we want. I'll just call it dot base sixty four. Okay. Um, next, we're gonna write some more HTML. The HTML between the two font faces. All right. So we echo again. Quote. We're gonna close this url construct and then add this is important that it comes after the url you put format parenthesis quote true type close quote close parenthesis semicolon close curly brace which closes our font face and that's good for that font. Let's add two font faces just for fun. Font dash face font family quote libel suite semicolon source colon URL data colon font slash true type semicolon char set equals utf-8 semicolon base 64 comma close single quote send that into underscore index 0 3 dot html okay and then we're going to base 64 encode another font Base 64. We will copy this path up to there. Go into L slash libel suite dot TTF pipe and do the our Perl command again dash PE quote chomp into index zero four dash font dash libel suite dot t uh, base 64 let's give this a label for completeness base 64 encode the second font okay and we're getting to the end here write the rest of the HTML echo single quote we close the parenthesis for the URL we add format quote true type quote close paren semicolon close curly brace and We're almost done with this style, but we're going to add a style to the h1 tag to give it font-family quote 1979, the same font family we declared above, semicolon, close curly brace, h2. It's going to have the font dash family of Libel Suite. And that is enough style for today. Let's close our head. Let's open our body so we can see some font style. Add a div and then we'll add an h1 and put some text in there like this is in the 1979 1979 font close the h1 
Crit and H2. This is in the libo suite font. Close the H2. H3. This is in the default font. H3. And we close all of our HTML tags and write this to a file index05.html. Now we will concatenate all of the HTML fragments together. And we're going to use Perl again. Yay, Perl! Perl PE. Now here we can do chomp if end of file. So this this doesn't put every new line. This this doesn't get rid of every new line. Just the last one on each on each of these files. And we. So we, we do that on index star, under, underscore index star. So that's all the files starting with underscore index. And we write that to index.html. Now we do one more clever command to open the page in the browser and we use xdg dash open index.html. This command will open if you if you put a URL after this as the first parameter, it'll open the URL in the browser. And if you put a path to a file, it will open that file in the application that is associated with the with the file extension for that file. So in this case, HTML files are going to open in Firefox. So let's see if this works. We save our file and then we go into the our directory and we have this generate.sh. So we're going to run it for the first time with sh generate.sh and see what we get. There it opened in the browser. Let's take a look at what we have here though. LS. Okay, so we have our index 01, index 02, index 03, index 04, index 05, and the result of them appended together in index.html. So let's take a look at our index.html. We have our beginning HTML up to the font face, and then there's the there's the base64 encoded font. So we have one of those there. We have another one there. And we missed something here. Let me check if this path is correct. It is. And, oh, I forgot to put underscore. My bad. Let's go to here and put an underscore right there and delete this rm-f index 04 and let's run this again should have better results okay run that again let's take a look at it so we have font face number one and we have font face number two great and we have the end of the file, so let's see what it looks like. 
sure enough, this is 1979, this is Little Suite, and this is the default font. So, I hope this was helpful to you, and, and I hope you enjoyed it. So, in the meantime, switch to Linux, computate your way to success, and remember, life is terrific. Just enjoy it.